Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. So this video is part two to the first video that I put out last week um, in regards to how I found clients when I moved here to Houston, Texas over four years ago. That video has gotten a pretty good response, but I couldn't fit everything I knew into that one video or I could have, but it would have been a very long video. So I decided to break it up into like three parts. And this is part two. If you missed the first part, just click up here and you will get access to that video or you can wait until this video is over and then go to the link in the description. In that video, I talked about three specific things, which was establishing a website, uh, building up a, an account in the profile on Production Hub and DMing people, <laughs> DMing companies, emailing companies. And that was part of it. But there are so many other things that I had to do in order to get set up um, for those responses. One of the things I had to do was really build up my Instagram page uh, because, you know, at that time, Instagram was the way uh, it probably still is the way. But uh, a lot of people go towards your social media accounts just to see what you're all about. Right when I got here, COVID happened. And during that time, everyone was on social media. So I used that time to fine tune my Instagram page. I, I, once upon a time, I was just posting stuff. I didn't know what to post. I was posting full length projects. I was posting stuff on their IGTV. It was just a bunch of stuff that I was posting, but I started looking at other accounts that uh, people that I admired. And I said, you know what, let me, let me shift a little bit and change the way I'm perceived on social media. So I was contacted by an individual on Instagram through the DMs because they were looking for a videographer to film their fundraising event. The rate that they had wasn't typically the rate that I wanted to take. I used this as an opportunity to like, okay, like I need to meet people. I need to connect with people. I'm going to take this rate because I just want to see what it's going to bring me. Plus, I was actually curious about the event. It was a fundraising event for a film that was being shot or that I believe already was shot, but they were raising funds to uh, continue to push the film um, to all like the film festivals, uh, like all the distribution stuff they had to do. The topic was about sex trafficking and it was a documentary. And at the time I was looking to kind of shift over from just being this all service provider and all things video to documentary. At this event, I learned more about their project and more about um, the mission of their film. And it just intrigued me. I met some of the sex trafficking survivors and, and listened to them tell their stories. It just did something to me inside. And I said, man, I have to figure out a way to be a part of this project. After the event was over, the clients received their deliverables. Everything was done. I reached back out to them and said, hey, if you're still shooting um, this in Houston, I would love to be a part of it. They said, cool, uh, we don't have a budget for someone of your caliber. <laughs> so um, I said, no, no worries. I'll do it voluntarily. I just want to be a part of the project. Fast forward, after their film project was done, they were hired as directors for a new project. This project was a little bit different. It involved uh, the stray dog crisis here in Houston, Texas. And they reached out to me. They remembered my interests. They loved working with me. Um, our spirits connected. And they said, hey, would you like to be the DP for this project? It's a long-term project. It may take over a year to shoot it, but uh, we would love to have you aboard. This was the first film project that I worked on where I got hired as a DP, specifically as a DP, and it was a feature film. Of course, I'm gonna take the job. Um, the film's called For the Animals. Dear God, please watch over us today as we go into these areas of town. If there's an animal, a dog, a cat, or otherwise that we should find and help, please make them visible to us and give us the strength to continue this important work. 
this one needs some help. Look at this dog living. Look at him. Oh my God. Lundquist Faust and her sister Tema are the founders of a nonprofit called Houston Pet Set. The situation here in Houston is dire. It's a quality of life public safety issue. We have too many stray animals on our streets. They did not sign up for this. You know, when we domesticated them, we made a deal with them. We would take care of them. They would be in our homes. We would feed them. We failed them so miserably. Animals living in complete filth, suffering. Rescues are full and the streets are packed. What do you do? I'm a street feeder here in what is called the corridor, the place where they dump dogs that have been used for breeding, that have been used for fighting and baiting. How has it gotten like this? Why don't the elected officials care? I get mad at the people that don't do anything because if everybody would do a little bit, we could fix it. Everybody's looking for someone else to do it, but we have to be the change that we want to see. Tina named him Walter. Walter! <laughs> They're kind of like these unicorns of rescue. They can make so much positive change in the city of Houston. We have more resources. We have more groups helping. The shelters are better. But the problem is getting worse. The animals are breeding faster. We've got leaders mm -hmm. continually blocking these efforts. Until we change the hearts and minds of people, we will carry this burden. At this stage, we wonder, is there any hope for the animals? We became really close through the course of a year, and I'm so close that we are friends to this day. In fact, the experience was so great that they were the reason why I decided to shoot my own feature film, which is called Parents of the Spectrum. And that's the film that I talked about in other videos, which follows the stories of parents raising kids who are on the spectrum. And they are now the executive producers of this film, and they fronted the startup money that I needed to get this film off the ground. So a $500 job turned into my first full-length contract as a DP for a feature film. It also turned into me being able to get executive producers for my own film and being fronted some of the startup capital for that film. But here's the cool thing about that. That allowed me to get my first IMDb credit. And it also attracted a company in the UK that was looking for someone in the US to help them with a docu-series. I've been working with this company for over a year and I signed a pretty cool contract with them to do some of their docu-series stories. All of this happened from a $500 job. All of this was connected to just being a good person. All of this happened by presenting myself a certain way on social media so that people saw that I was about this life. So if anyone started to watch this video and thought I was gonna give like this formula to how to get clients, um, there's no secret sauce for me. I didn't have like a, a funnel system or something like that to to bring in all these leads and you know lead generating apps and in and, and, and a team i honestly think that if i had that stuff i probably wouldn't have been able to handle that type of bandwidth i i probably would have choked i probably would have messed something up because i just wasn't my infrastructure wasn't there a lot of people look for all these oh, i'm gonna have all these clients and yada 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 but your infrastructure may not be able to handle that for me i can honestly say mine wasn't the pace that i was growing was a pace that I can control, especially being an active father, husband, it would have been too much. So I'm glad that I'm growing at the pace that I am. I got one more video to drop about this topic. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe, hit the bell for the notifications so you can know when it drops and definitely give your boy a like if this was something that you actually liked. Hey guys, look, it's tough out there and things are probably gonna get a little bit tougher, you know, with AI coming out and, you know, people kind of like downscaling their budgets and not really caring too much about high quality, you know, production value and they're kind of shooting things on like cell phones and stuff now. Um, it's gonna get even tougher. But ask yourself, have you tried everything? Before you give up and throw away the towel and sell all your gear, really ask yourself, have you tried some of the methods that I did or others? Or have you just stuck to one way to try to find clients and then gave up? If you haven't tried those ways, please try them and give it a shot and just see what happens. 
you might just surprise yourself. So until next time, guys, take care of yourselves, stay hydrated, and remember that you matter. Peace.